Ooh, oops. Oh, shit. Uh, they are making it very quiet. I have to wait for my poor carnita quesadillas to finish microwaving. <laughs> Yesterday I went to the college cafeteria and I got a cool to go bin. And that poor carnita quesadillas that day and I was like, oh, hell yeah. Because 90% of the time the food there is disgusting. So whenever they do have good food, I bring my box, my like to go box, and I just stuff it. With as much stuff as I can. And it was carnita quesadillas. So my my big green box is just filled with carnita quesadillas that I've been eating for like the past two days. <laughs> and they're so good. But I had to wait for them to microwave. They exploded yesterday when I microwaved them. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you doing? I'm... How am I doing? I think I'm alright. But... I don't know. Mostly college stuff. Outside of that, I'm perfectly fine. But... Oh my lord. The semester's almost over. It ends in the beginning of May. Um... I've been having four classes, but... Two of four are... They're, uh, they're very, very tricky. <laughs> Two of my four classes are very tricky. And what I've been doing is... I've been managing two of my classes recently. Like, I've been very on point with those two classes. Just getting everything done immediately as soon as I can. And the other two, I have neglected entirely. I've been ab getting absolutely zero progress in those. Those are the ones that are scaring the hell out of me. <laughs> and I think I'm in a position now where I can go back and just focus on those ones. Because the two classes I've been doing right now, they're in a pretty stable position where I can just ignore them for a bit and they'll be fine. And I can take that time... To focus on the two hellish nightmare classes. The one where I just read... <laughs> one of them I just read... An entire book. And then I have to answer like 50 questions. And then... But not like multiple... They're like... In your own words. And it's like, I don't care. I have no passion towards this random book you're throwing at me. It's like, what do you feel about what... I don't feel anything. I don't care. <laughs> I do not care about anything in this book. I'm reading it because you told me to, not because I want to. I'm going to have no feeling or opinion towards anything in this book. But I have to to get grades, so there's that. And then I have to write an essay on said book, which I think is the easier part. I think the essay is the easier part, but at the same time, you can't write the essay until you do the questions because you don't understand the book until you do the questions. So once you do the questions, which is the sucky part, then you get the essay and it's like, okay, this is fine. But then you have to read another book and it's like, what the hell? <laughs> and the other one, the other class I really do like. It's just, good lord, it's hard to keep up. It, my 2D animation class. It was like, okay guys, we're going to learn very basics of animation. We're going to animate a ball. We're going to be doing five frames. Okay, guys, great. You did it. You moved the ball from the left to the right. Okay, now that you know how to do that, I want you to make an entire room with settings and characters and fully animation and dialogue. And I'm like, what the hell? Where, where'd steps two through nine go? We're already on ten? <laughs> what the hell happened? I hate books. I Yeah, books are my nemesis. I, I don't know why. Maybe they aren't. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I th I think my nemesis is doing something. The bane of my life is when I have to do something. But that thing that I have to do 
not only do I not care about in any way whatsoever, but it's also something that I am not going to get any value out of either. When I'm forced to do something that's just going to be a waste of time. Like with these books, for example. I'm going to read these books. I'm going to do the assignments. I'm going I'm to put so much time and energy and stress into getting these assignments and essays done. And as soon as that class is over, all that knowledge is going to go out the window. Because I don't need it. I don't care. It's a class I'm taking because I'm required to. Not for my elective. So it's like, what the hell? <laughs> It's a waste of time, yet I'm required to do it. That's my bane. And I hate books because the only time I ever really do read books is when it's a book that I'm forced to read, even though I don't care. <laughs> but anyways, we're here to continue the tier list. We finished the Showa era, and it's funny because at the beginning of last stream, I honest to God thought we were going to get the whole thing done. Mmm, this thing is good. Boy, was I wrong. Heard a while back that you only remember 30% of everything you learned from school. Yeah, you do. You know why? Because <laughs> that 70% of stuff you learn at school, who needs to know that? Nobody. Nobody needs to know that. But at the same time, I kind of understand why they teach it to people. You don't need to know these things to live in the United States, but at the same time, it's nice to know. Like, if schools aren't telling you every single president, it's like, yeah, I don't care, but I should probably know that, right? <laughs> but then there's things like math equations, where it's like, I don't need to know this formula for working at Olive Garden. Like, what the hell? That I kind of get, though, because I think the end goal isn't people need to know how to do this formula when they're done with school. I think the end goal is we have trained that part of their brain for adulthood. It's like, yeah, you don't need to use that specific formula, but that part of your brain, that calculating side of your brain, the part of your brain that puts pieces together... That is very strong now, and you can apply that strength to other things in your adulthood. That's how I think it works. But I can see people really want to get to Godzilla now, so I'll stop talking about school. This isn't my school venting stream. It's Godzilla tearless stream. So. Yeah, we're going to get to Heisei now. Have I seen the new Empire? I did see the new Empire. I saw it on April 1st. Unfortunately, we probably aren't going to get it on the tier list until, like, next week. If this goes at the same pace as last stream did, we're going to get Heisei and Millennium down. And then Monsterverse and Rei was going to be a third stream. I think that's how it's going to work. But who knows? We don't have to spend time arranging the names of the lists and all that stuff. We can just get right into it. Or I can just keep talking about school. The Hanna-Barbera series, I, I haven't watched the entire thing. But I did watch plenty of it. Um, when I was a kid, I, I'd go to the library a lot with my mom and she'd take me and all my siblings. And I remember, this was like when I just became a Godzilla fan. Like, I just got fret, I was like, oh, I love this stuff. And I always went to the movie TV section, just because movies and TVs are awesome. Movie and TV shows... And I saw, it was like, what? There's a Godzilla animated show? No way! And then we'd, like, rent that from the library. And I'd watch it, and I'd be like, oh. Oh. <laughs> this is... This is something, I, I guess. <laughs> it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good enough to get me hooked, I guess. 
the Hanna Barbera show. But like in theory, that sounds perfect because Hanna Barbera is awesome. But I guess it didn't work for me. And I'm drinking Monster again because I also had a horrible time sleeping last night. Okay. Why don't we just get into it now? Um, hey, say era, we are, well, technically, you. Next up, after you, I already said it in the last stream, you are technically not a Showa movie. You are your own thing. You're just as much of a Showa movie as you are a Heisei movie, and a Millennium movie, and a Millennium movie, and a Millennium movie, and yeah. The 98 animated series. I watched that too. That was actually recent too. Um, I was just dogging on the show one time on Discord and someone was like, did you even watch it? And I was like, no. And they're like, well, then you can't dog on it because you haven't watched it. And I was like, you know what? Fair point. And then I bought it on eBay for like $7. The, the entire series on DVD. I, I got the entire thing. Um, I watched it all. Like I just binged it. I first watched the 98 movie to prepare myself. I watched the 98 movie. Then I watched the animated series right after it to get, like, the ultimate Zilla experience. And, like, it's okay, I guess. It's definitely not this pants creamer of a series that people have been making it out to be. In comparison to the movie, absolutely. The animated series is a god in comparison to this movie specifically. But when I look at all this, that that shows us like, okay, whatever. I I'd rather watch a lot of other things. But if the franchise was just this movie and that show, yes, the show would easily be the best thing. It's the best thing Zilla has going for him. That's what I'd say. But we're not here yet. We are back here. Blech. Godzilla 1984. Well, no. Godzilla 1985. If you're going to be calling it that. If you're talking about the 84 movie, it's the return of Godzilla. There is no movie could just called Godzilla 1984. Um... This is actually a tricky one to start with, because this is probably my least watched Heisei film. But I don't... It's not bad. I know that. I've seen it a few times, and I never watched it and went, this is bad. But at the same time, I don't think I've ever watched it and went, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm not the biggest fan of the suit in the movie. I am, however, in love with the robot. The full-sized animatronic robot that they made for the movie. That thing is beautiful. So, there's a lot of scenes that are really cool. But then again, this is the Godzilla franchise. Action scenes are always going to be cool. So I need to base it off of other aspects too. I can't just go, I think he looks cool. I think the fights are cool. And he's really strong, and I think he could beat X character. I need to rate it as a movie, unfortunately. <laughs> Hence, son of Godzilla being all the way up here. If it was just designs, cool, who would win, I wouldn't care. But Godzilla 1984, as a movie entirely. So I am taking that stuff into consideration. Designs, action, and whatever. But also the movie as a movie. As we all know, it is a very Cold War heavy film. There's a lot of propaganda of that in this film. Um, it was handled all right, I suppose. Like, obviously, with a lot of biased propaganda, but... 84 definitely handled it better than 85, which was very Americanized and 
the Russians were way more evil and straight up, we're going to kill the world. 84 film, it's just, it's the Cold War conflict and it's like, whatever. Um, the idea of Godzilla coming back, I think was handled pretty well. They brought the film back to being a bit darker. Definitely not as dark as the film it's trying to continue off of, but... It pulled it off all right, I suppose. Um, trust me, the rest of the films are going to be better than this. I have, I don't have much to say about 84. I'm really trying. Trust me, I'm going to have more to say with the other movies. <laughs> 84 is just that movie that... It, it exists. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's... It did what it wanted to do. But it didn't go, it didn't catch my heart, I guess is one way I could put it. I enjoyed it, but it was kind of forgettable. It was a great foundation. I don't know. Well, it's definitely going in here somewhere. Because like I just said, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. I didn't take anything away from it, but I didn't despise anything either. So that's, like, perfect for this tier. I think this is... Where do I put it amongst Ghidorah and the Sea Monster, though? I think I like it more than Ghidorah. Do I like it more than the Sea Monster, though? I... Ooh. Damn, because Sea Monster's fun! Sea Monster is a fun movie, and not dumb. F well, it's just straight up entertaining and colorful. Sh fun plot. Some of the main characters in the set plot stink, though. But, like the stuff they have to do and all that. That's all right. Eighty four. Yeah, they could have done better. They definitely got passing grade. They passed. They went, congratulations, you made a good enough movie. But it could have been more. It could have been bigger. Oh, design-wise, of course. But just as a movie, I'm speaking, They, I think they could have done just a little better. I kind of like the 84 design. It's not my favorite, but I kind of like it. Because they didn't have a new definitive design for Godzilla yet. So, it looks very Showa, but modern. It looks like they tried to remaster the Showa design. Which I think is kind of cool. It's just the design that they stick with immediately after this film is the perfect design and it's not even debatable so <laughs> he looked like an advanced show us he looks like soshin geki but newer which i thought was cool i i i think him being just the only one in it is fine I think it being a so I think that's the right thing to do. It should have been a solo film, and it was, and I think that was a smart move. Just set the foundation for this universe without immediately starting it right off the bat with crazy superpower demon monster. I think that's a good place for Godzilla eighty four, and I want to move on to the next movie because I'm just spitting stuff out of my mouth to get this one over with. <laughs> Godzilla vs. Biollante, the next movie in the Heisei era. The uncut gem of the franchise. You either love it or you don't know it exists. <laughs> or you must have watched a different movie if you said it was not amazing. Because Godzilla vs. Biollante... This is a great movie. I don't think it's 
like the pinnacle peak of the franchise. Because we take the things that people talk about with this movie, where they're absolutely correct. Biolanti is an amazing kaiju. They have an amazing story of being the deceased daughter of a scientist who couldn't cope with his daughter's death. Tried to bring her back with the genetics of Godzilla's regeneration and rose plants and it goes horribly wrong and it shows you the errors of like bio stuff <laughs> and it just makes it even worse monstrosity and stuff like that is an amazing story for a kaiju and it fights godzilla like come on like that is all amazing but you can't just ignore the other parts that people are like oh that that's something that's in this movie. Like, the Seradian agent. It's like, what is this about? It wasn't bad. It was not bad at all. It's just... I guess this was in the movie. There's the people that held the ransom and released Godzilla. It's like, oh, okay. We got our introduction to Miki. And they had their whole B-plot of trying to mind-control Godzilla. And it's like, oh... Um, okay. Abs uh, I'm, I'm going to get to that part. Don't you worry. Because that's absolutely true. I'll get to that part. Don't worry. But. Um. Yeah, there is. There's quite a few B-plots. There's the B-plot of. The, the agent of Seradia. Which is essentially just fake Middle Eastern country in fiction number 400, 900, 497. Um, there's the Minky stuff where they try to go, we're doing Operation whatever, where we're training these people to have telepathy and they can tell Godzilla to go fuck off or whatever. It's weird. You gotta remember, Biolanti's barely even in the movie, too. Like, there's a lot of the build-up for her with, like, the scientist's daughter, Erica. That's right, that's her name. I only remember her name's Erica because Pokemon has the grass-type gym leader that's named Erica. And I'm like, oh, shit, wait a minute. <laughs> They're both grass types. <laughs> so, yeah, there's Erica. They keep talking about that, and, and then you see her dead, and it's like, oh, shit, and then you see her dad, like, doing... A, there's a lot of build-up for Biolanti, and then the thieves break into the lab, and then the young Biolanti attacks them and stuff. Then you see Biolanti growing in the water. This is pretty good stuff so far. Then Godzilla shows up, and then they fight. Godzilla immediately wrecks her, and then she flies away. And then the movie just forgets she exists entirely until the climax of the movie. It, it They just forget Biolanti exists and it's just Miki Zagusa mind control plot for the rest of the movie. It's like, okay. Super X2. That's another B plot. Okay. The Super X2. They tried to bring back the Super X1 with the Super X2. It's not as cool. This first Super X seemed like a legitimate weapon that was strong enough to... Do some pretty heavy shit to Godzilla. Super X2 was, we made a really big laser that kind of hurts him, I guess. And we can't even use it forever. Or else we're going to blow up or something. It's like, okay. <laughs> but when that climax does finally happen. Holy shit. <laughs> that is some... That is some amazing kaiju content right there. Biolanti. Biolanti's final form is objectively, like, you can't debate this. Biolanti is the peak of tokusatsu as an art form. The entire art form of Tokusatsu peaked with Biolanti's final form. That thing was massive. 
That thing was terrifying. That thing had so much crazy detail and attention put into it. It had tons of tentacles. Everyone holding piano wires in the filming room. Controlling every single tentacle, making them move around and flail. The entire thing was on a conveyor belt, so it could charge forwards. They would have steam everywhere, smoke. It could fire vomit out of its throat. It looked perfect. They never got better. Not that they got bad, it's just... Biolanti was just that high. And not just Godzilla. I'm talking about all of Tokusatsu. Not just Godzilla. I'm talking about the entire art form of Tokusatsu. Never got better than Biolanti. That was such an amazing engineering feat. That it makes the fact Biolanti's only in the movie for like 20 seconds kind of worth it. Biolanti's final form is only in the movie for like two minutes, but those two minutes are some of the coolest visual shots of anything in the entirety of tokusatsu. Holy shit. <laughs> Biolanti is easily one of the coolest kaiju ever. They people say this movie's underrated. That is absolutely true. I this is going really high, but I don't know if it goes up here. It might. You know what? No, it does. I I don't know what I'm saying. It goes up here for sure. Where do I rank it among the best though? I It might be there, but I'm honestly thinking if I could put it above 54. Could I? Yes, I can. I'm, I can't put it above Mothra, though. I can't put it over Godzilla vs. Mothra. But Biolanti is a very well-done movie. Again, not perfectly done. There's still some odd choices, like the Super X and the introduction of Miki, who unfortunately I don't think was a good addition <laughs> to the Heisei era. But we'll get into that more. Because this is her introduction, and she's in plenty of more movies. So we've got a lot of time to talk about Miki Saguza. <laughs> Anyways. Go, let me... Oh, no, it's stuck to the plate. There we go. Let me just take a... Um, bite of my quesadilla. If you guys can hear the chewing, that's something. <laughs> Anyways, Godzilla vs. Ghidorah, 1991. The time travel movie. Also the first movie that's just one-on-one -on -one Godzilla and Ghidorah. Take that, you dinosaur. There's a dinosaur! A gigantic dinosaur is attacking our boys! A dinosaur? What? <laughs> you can tell your son about it. Spielberg? <laughs> use the... Use the G-Grappler! Yes, I know that. <laughs> These are Dorads. They're not harmful. Godzilla has been removed from the situation. And now King Ghidorah has taken his place. <laughs> the dub for this movie is so funny. Specifically, 
with the U.S. soldiers. That's the funniest shit ever. Take that, you dinosaur. <laughs> Anyways. This is a... How would I describe this movie? It's a time travel... World War II... Origin story... Yeah. <laughs> Time travel World War II origin story. Time travel is a huge part in this movie. Um, how does the movie begin? Not counting the prologue. There's the guy who's an author who writes about Godzilla. When the UFO shows up and the army's like, whoa, fuck. There's, there's a thing here. And then you're like, oh shit, aliens, because King Ghidorah is always with aliens. And the King Ghidorah movies, you're like, oh shit, aliens, right? And then they're like, no, we're semi-aliens, as in we're freaky people from the future. Godzilla's gonna destroy Japan soon, so why don't we erase him? Oh shit, really? Yeah, here, let's bring these people along. Uh, me? Why? Because we read your book. And it's like the bible in our future whoa what yeah come on let's go <laughs> um yeah then they go back to the past but like way back to the past like world war ii <laughs> to the island where godzilla's born where you find out He was a dinosaur called a Godzillasaurus. And I completely skipped over a character. I'm so sorry. The dude. Um, I, I don't know anyone's names. The guy who was a World War II veteran on that island. Who said that he saw Godzilla as a dinosaur on that island. This guy's story is... Uh, he's definitely the main story of the movie. This guy. Who is like one of the only people on earth that doesn't see Godzilla as completely malicious. Because he was on that island. And the Japanese were getting their asses wiped by the Americans. And then a dinosaur just fucking showed up and started eating all the Americans. And he took that as he's saving us. Oh shit, no way, that's awesome. Hip hip hooray. And then the, the Americans had, had boats that could make the dinosaur take that. And then the dinosaur took it. And then they were like, take that, you dinosaur. <laughs> and then it fucking bled out or something. And it probably would have ate them. But the Japanese soldiers stood there and were like, you are dying. Thank you. We hope you die peacefully. And then they leave. And then the nuke goes off and then Godzilla's born. But they go back to the past. And M11, the, the, the coolest character. He's Android 16. He he goes on a conveyor belt and he slides through the forest during World War II. And what they do is they teleport Godzilla's dying body into the ocean. <laughs> and, okay, this is a hot take. This is a hot take I have with this movie. A lot of people don't like the Dorats, and I understand completely. I like them. I like the Dorats. They definitely aren't my favorite Ghidorah origin story, but I like the idea of the Dorats. Because the people from the future are secretly evil people. And they want to take over Japan. So they want to rewrite history to have Ghidorah show up instead of Godzilla. So then they have the influence over Japan. And what they did is, in the future, they bioengineered these creatures called the Dorats, which, at face value, just seem like cute little Furby pet monsters that everyone loves and things are adorable and cute and sweet. However, I think dramatic irony works very well in this movie, where the main characters look at these cute things and go, oh, these are cute, and then that's it, they move on. 
people watching the movie know exactly what's going on. They know exactly what those three little Dorats are going to do. It also helps that whenever the Dorats are on screen, it plays Ghidorah's theme, but like super slow and cute with a xylophone. Like it tries to sound cute and playful, but the background noise in the music is also like dark and eerie. So it's very unsettling. And I think that's great. Every time the Dorats are on screen, it's just, we're cute little innocent creatures. That's what the main characters think. You know damn well, though. You know exactly what's about to happen. And I think that dramatic irony works very well. And they could have looked a lot worse. Their designs are all right. For sure. They could have been better. Absolutely. I think they worked effectively, though. They, they're, they foreshadow. Terror. Terror. And they aren't, like, too cute. I don't think they're too cute. They're just... They look weak and feeble and innocent. And that's the point. That this hellstorm of Ghidorah is right in front of your face and you can't recognize it. Because it's it's so small and, and weak. And it shows you that, like, at any moment, anything could just turn into hell. Even these things. They're... They are destined to become the destruction of Japan. <laughs> that, that is what they are, that is their purpose. That is what they are built for. Their purpose was to turn into Ghidorah. And no one saw that. That's cool. <laughs> it's doom staring you in the face and you don't even know it. And again, that eerie music portrays that perfectly they are looking at king Ghidorah in their lap and they don't know it and they go back to the present and king Ghidorah is there and it's oh shit then godzilla's back for some reason which i don't get like yeah i understand like oh well first of all they messed up by going oh godzilla's alive how i thought we put him in the ocean yeah, well, a nuclear sub actually blew up there or something, or there was nuclear waste there. Okay, so you mean when we went back to the past to prevent Godzilla from happening, we removed him from the equation where a nuke was going to drop and give him radiation, right? You guys placed him in the ocean exactly in a spot where a nuclear sub was going to blow up. Like, perfectly. You you got right on point of just picking a random spot in the ocean where a nuclear sub was going to give him radiation. And now he's back. Like, what the hell is... Are you guys that fucking stupid? <laughs> Come on! Uh, <laughs> that's, that's so bullshit. Like, there's no way that would have happened. Not only that... How's he not dead? He's not a sea creature before Godzilla. He's not the semi-aquatic monster. That, he's just a straight-up theropod dinosaur that was mortally wounded, and then they dropped it in the ocean. It, it should have drowned. It should have died. When it sank to the bottom of the ocean, it should have crushed under the pressure of the water. Like, no. Do <laughs> you think he was just sitting there in the bottom of the ocean, still just breathing, like... <gasps> Oh, man, I'm gonna die soon. Man, he drowned and sank to the bottom of the ocean. For And he was down there for Lord knows how long. That fucker should have been dead. Like, dead, dead. And even if, like, okay, nuclear bomb. Okay, he's back to life and he's mutated. I, I still can't believe they perfectly picked a spot where a nuclear sub was gonna go off. They're like, oh, Godzilla's still alive? Oh, well, lucky us, I guess. Let's give him another sub. No, 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 wait. That's not what happened. They were like, wait a minute. We gotta revive Godzilla. Okay, let's get a nuclear sub. Let's get a nuclear sub and bring it to where Godzilla's corpse is and revive him. It's like, okay. Then they get the nuclear sub, they fill it with explosives, and they bring it down to the ocean. And they're like, okay, let's wake him up. What? He's already alive? It's like, yeah, apparently another nuclear sub was here not too long ago. 
and woke him up or revived him. It's like, are you fucking serious? That's the, that's the most bullshit thing ever. And then he gets a second nuclear sub feast. And now he's huge. And then he fights. And if any of you talk to me on Discord, you know absolutely I don't like his design in this movie. Godzilla's. His first one, at least. For those of you that don't know, Godzilla has two suits in this film. Suit number one. It's the one when he fights Ghidorah in the mountains. Then suit number two is the suit when he fights Mecha King Ghidorah in Shinjuku. The one where he fights Ghidorah in Hokkaido, the mountains. I don't like that one. It's my least favorite Heisei suit. I'd like it even less than 84. I, I don't like it. The proportions are gross. He looks like he ate bees. He's super skinny. He looks like he stuffed a pillow in his shirt to make his chest look big. Like, it doesn't look naturally buff and swollen. I hear everyone saying 91 looks amazing because he looks like he's ripped and he got, went to work out. He doesn't look buff. He just looks like he filled his chest with air. And that he's just wearing, like, super fat MC Hammer pants. And his spines go so low down his back. It's like, what the hell? Like, they start so low. The spines on his... The spikes on his spine... They don't start to grow until, like, you get past his shoulders. What the... Oh. I was looking at my highlights. And I'm like, why was there just nothing? <laughs> it's probably gonna happen again, but whatever. I don't care. Um... Yeah, I just don't like this 91 design. It, it It's so unappealing to me. The proportions are off like crazy. If you're buff and you're swollen, you worked out, your whole body is bulked and built. It's not, I inflated my chest and everything else is fine. Like, no, that's gross and improportionate. Anyways, the fight's all right, mind control, all that. Godzilla become, th that's a part I like about this movie where the power struggle and the label that Godzilla has in the film constantly fluctuates. He's either the villain, the protector, and then the villain again, and then that's it. But this was the debut of Mecha King Ghidorah. Man, I have so much to say about this movie, and we're already 40 minutes in. <laughs> this is such an interesting movie. Um, Godzilla went, it's funny because the main characters have to break into the UFO, take it over, and then they break Ghidorah's mind control. And he just sits there like a dumb puppy because he doesn't have anyone commanding him. And Godzilla kicks his ass, blows up the UFO, kills Ghidorah, and then immediately goes back to destroying Japan. It's like, oh shit, what should we do? Well, what did we do when Ghidorah was attacking the city? Uh, we got Godzilla back? Yeah, let's just do the same. Let's get Ghidorah back. <gasps> what? But Ghidorah's evil. No, no, no. Don't you get it? We're going to make Ghidorah on our side. <gasps> Whoa, what? How are we going to do that? And then the lady from the future is like, oh, I can rebuild him and then bring him back here. So that's actually kind of weird to think about. When Mecha King Ghidorah comes back to fight Godzilla... The present day Ghidorah is still just sitting in the ocean. Because they didn't take present day King Ghidorah and built him into Mecha King Ghidorah. They went into the future, built his corpse into the robot, and that robot is still in the future, and they brought the Mecha back to the present. Ghidorah has the ability to time travel. He himself goes through time. To the present to fight Godzilla. So his current dead body is still just sitting in the ocean. Baby's first cyclone. You. Oh, hi, it's you. I mean, baby's first cyclone ice stream. Baby's first cyclone ice stream is like. Actually, you might be right. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. Mecha King Ghidorah is one of my favorite designs in the entirety of Heisei, for sure. I love Mecha King Ghidorah. Their abilities are cool. Um, I think they were stronger than normal. I know there's... That's a very big debate. 
whether who was stronger, normal or mecha. The problem is both seemed like they sucked, <laughs> so it's hard to decide. Ghidorah's consistently been, I am very powerful, but at the same time I get my ass kicked easily. I think he's, out of all the movies where he had to fight someone, he definitely seemed the strongest in his first movie. Because he actually had to make everyone go, oh shit, we're losing. We have to do something about this and plan and strategize. In Astro Monster, they just kick his ass like right off the bat and destroy all monsters. They all just gang up on him and he's dead immediately. In the Gigan movie, he's like, he's kind of there. <laughs> like, come on, he gets his ass kicked by Godzilla and Angiris alone. While still having Gigan as a partner. He, he gets pushed around a lot. And in this movie too, it's just Godzilla. And he kicks his ass. Both times. As normal or mecha. So it's hard to decide like which one's stronger. Him without mecha or him with mecha. And it's like, both didn't do too well. <laughs> Mecha's way cooler though. I He's, he's so sick. The middle head being the robot, but, like, keeping the other two normal is awesome. I like how he's a cyborg, and he's not just a 100% robot. Um, I, I like this movie. But at the same time, if you're not ready for it, it is easy to fall asleep. Because it takes a while to get to that stuff. There's a lot of information you have to take in for the movie. Um... Where would I put it, though? The highs of this movie are really high. I love the Mecha King Ghidorah fight. I love... The Mecha King Ghidorah fight. <laughs> the rest of the movies... In terms of adding to the story, like the entirety of the story, this is a great movie. But as its own thing... It's not really the best. The main Ghidorah fight in the mountains is kind of whatever. Ghidorah's origin I loved. I love how they brought that into fruition. It's not my favorite, but again, I really enjoyed it. If you look at it, the pe reason why people don't like his Heisei origin is, in the Showa era, he's an evil space tyrant. He's just a big space pirate that destroys planets and now Earth's his next victim. It's like, oh shit, that's cool. Then you gotta remember, after his first movie, he's just portrayed as an absolute pansy who's only reliable when he's in control of an alien. And as soon as that mind control's gone, he's just brainless and sits there like a dead puppy while everyone maims him. And it's like, okay. <laughs> I kind of, and the reason why people don't like him in the Heisei one is, Oh, he's just three random little cute puppy dog thingies that just turn into an evil dragon? You have to look at it deeper than that than just the face value. Like I said with the Dorats. At face value, they seem like one thing. But look into it deeper, and they are way more terrifying. These weren't just three random little cute thingies that existed. They were built specifically with the intention to become King Ghidorah. Humanity... In the future. Japan in the future. <laughs> These specific individuals in Japan in the future. <laughs> wanted world control. They want influence over the entire world. And they do that by erasing Godzilla from history. And creating their own monster to take his place. But you can't just go, look, we're going to make a giant three-headed golden dragon. You can't do that because then they're going to be like, what the hell are you doing? Though, so they disguised it. They disguised it as these small little creatures that no one saw as a threat. And put it in a situation where it would become a giant nightmare. That they had control of. Ghidorah in this series isn't the monster that came from space. 
that wants to claim Earth. Ghidorah in this series is the monster that's literally dethroning Godzilla. There was a monster on that island that got mutated and turned into a beast that attacks the planet? Psh, let's rewrite him out of history and have it be him instead. He's literally taking Godzilla's place. It's someone else now. His design... I think I still like Showa more, but it's not a bad design. It needed the mains, and it needed the... Uh, yeah, I like the Crescents. I he, I love the mains that the Showa design has. Unfortunately, I think the Heisei body looks even more like a roasted turkey. He looks very rotisserie chicken-y, <laughs> the body. But I love how shiny the gold is. I love how snarly and aggressive his heads look. The roar, I don't know how I feel about. I I like the ringing bell more. But like, his high-pitched Rodan roar is not the worst. Actually, it might be. Out of all the roars Ghidorah has had, it might be his worst. But it's not inherently like insulting or terrible. It's just my least favorite roar he's had. But yeah, the time travel, the spirit was there, but it could have been better. I like it more than this movie. I like it more than this movie. Do I like it more than Ebera? I think I do. It's at the top of not bad blood, but no passion either. I, I'm not in love with this movie, but I don't dislike it. Yeah, it's just high-pitched, sped-up Rodan Roar. Ugh. Okay, next movie. Godzilla and Mothra, The Battle for Earth. My first... E you don't count. My first ever Godzilla movie I ever watched. This is what hooked me to the franchise. And ironically... Hold on. Ow, I bit my tongue. This was my first movie. But, ironically, I watched this movie when I was like seven. And I thought it was Mothra's franchise. I thought this was her franchise. Because I remember when I watched this, there was a big like marathon on Xfinity on Demand or whatever. Like, oh, monster movies or whatever. This was one of them. The other movies were... The entire Rebirth of Mothra trilogy. And also GMK. These were all movies with Mothra in them. So I thought... This was her This was her franchise. They were the Mothra movies. I was a Mothra fan first. Mothra was what got me into the franchise at first. I thought it was the Mothra franchise. I was like, oh, she fought Godzilla? Oh, that's cool. Then I watch GMK. Oh, look, she fights Godzilla again. And there's this golden dragon? Oh, that's cool. So yeah, GMK Ghidorah was also my debut to King Ghidorah. So you can imagine how surprised I was when I found out that in every single other iteration of Ghidorah, he's a villain from space or he's just like evil. <laughs> I got unleashed on the PS2 and I'm like, why is he so evil? <laughs> what the hell? I thought he was a good guy. Nope. Anyways. If this was completely... Just how I feel about the movie. Like, oh, this is my favorite. This would be at the top. This is one of my favorite movies ever. I absolutely love this film. It is probably my favorite Heisei film. Subjectively. This is my favorite biased film in the franchise. Battle for Earth. I love it so much. But looking at it for what it is, 
hi. Um, it's definitely not perfect. <laughs> it's got some issues. But man, do I love the things that it does right. I think Mothra was handled fine. The whole point of the movie is sort of e be eco-friendly, I guess. Stop talking about G.I.J. Decker's figures! <gasps> They're not here! A poor G.I.J. Decker. Oh, no, I know what you're talking about. Okay, never mind. G-19 it up. Um... The whole point of the movie is like, oh, nature. We're ruining it. We gotta preserve nature. And I think that's handled well. It's not the main point of the movie, but it's the theme of the movie, I guess. Like, it's not the main plot. But they bring it up a lot of times, and it's not too bad. As in... They go on an adventure. Why, why do they go to Infant Island again? I'm trying to remember the specific reason that they went to Infant Island. I can't remember. But anyways, they go to that island. They see Mothra's egg. They go, holy shit. Guys, get a boat. We gotta haul this thing back, because this thing is dope. <laughs> um, and they find out that... What was it? I don't think it was the meteor. That's right, because there was a meteor at the beginning of the movie... That wakes up Godzilla and it's like, oh, Godzilla's back or whatever. But I think it was just climate change that made ice in the Arctic start to break apart. And you're introduced to a monster called Batra. And when the main characters are on Infant Island, you learn about who Batra is. And they say that the Earth created the moths. And they were the protectors of the world and humanity and all that stuff. But the apparently ancient people made a device that could control the weather. And they were fucking up the world. And the moths wouldn't do anything about it. So then the Earth created Batra, who was basically just another moth with the same intentions, but he does it a thousand times more violent. And he went, fuck you guys. And he destroyed the people that made the weather machine. But then he just went on a batshit crazy kill fest. And the other moths had to seal him away. <laughs> Batch was dope. He's he's a favorite of mine for sure. He's in like my top three favorite kaiju. Batch was my favorite. He's why I love this movie. I think Batra is what got me into the entire franchise of Godzilla. I watched this movie. I thought it was Mothra's franchise. And Batra stole the movie for me as a kid. When you're a little kid, you don't really care or recognize, like, story. You just go, look, monster. Blah, blah, blah. Batra gave me this moment where I watched the movie. I'm like, what? That monster did stuff. Like, <laughs> it's not often that a kaiju, it's not often that a kaiju can have a character arc. And that almost never happens in this franchise. The monster's just a monster, and they do monster things. Batra is an extremely rare instance where a kaiju actually goes through a character arc. Which is nuts. I love that. And it works for who he is. Batra was great. The main characters... I think they were alright. Some of them were, some parts of them are weird. Like the main character being an archaeologist guy or whatever, just to piggyback off the success of Indiana Jones. Like, that's clearly what that was. But I like the fact that he's like an adventurer. The main lady is his ex. And then the other guy is, he works for the major corporation that's like ruining the ecosystem. That's a solid lineup. And they go on, on the adventure on Infant Island. Their chemistry with each other is fun as hell. I actually kind of like that. Um, one problem, though. I've been talking about Mothra and Batra so much in this movie. I barely mentioned Godzilla. Because he's barely in the movie. 
and I'm pretty sure that's because this wasn't gonna be a Godzilla movie. It was just gonna be a Mothra and Batra film, and then they went, oh shit, let's throw Godzilla in and make it a Godzilla movie. So Godzilla's very secondary to this movie, which is weird, because it's his series of films. And if you watch it all as a marathon, it feels like you just took an intermission from the Godzilla story. So it's whatever. Yeah, Godzilla's design in this movie is... This is... This is my favorite design in the entire franchise. Godzilla 1992 is my favorite Godzilla. It's the tip... It's the main Heisei design, which is already objectively the best Godzilla look. It just is him. I think 92 did it the best. Every version of the Heisei suit took the main blueprints of the Godzilla Heisei design and then had like a thing or two changed to make it more unique. Like 89 had the slightly slimmer and longer neck. 91 had those goofy ass proportions. 93 is the Heisei look, but very chubby and fat. 94 is like the main Heisei look, but a bit more aggressive looking. And then 95 is just 94, but burning. 92, however, is just the Heisei design and just the Heisei design. It is just the standard. There's no extra quirky thing aside from it. It's just the look. It's just default. It's perfect. It is him. 92 looks so good. <laughs> um... I really like this movie. It's going in this tier for sure. But I'm going to push my bias aside to keep it out of here. But I'm going to still keep it up here. But where am I going to put it? I like it more than King Kong. I like it more than Gigan. I like it more than you. Well, I like it more than all of these. But what do I objectively think of it? And I do need to think... Because there's a rule that I'm going to apply with this movie that I need to still apply here, unfortunately. I'm going to put it here. I'm putting it there. I really like this movie, you guys. <laughs> Batra's, Batra stole it for me, for sure. His, his character arc. It's crazy how he has a character arc, and it's a real one. He's malicious. He's villainous. He destroys everything in sight, despite having good intention. He wants to protect the Earth, but he sees it as humans are ruining Earth. Okay, I gotta get rid of them. How, or I gotta make them stop doing that. I gotta make them stop harming the planet. How do I make them stop? Well, easy. Kill them. They'll stop then. It's the easiest way to do it. And he's way... He's very angry <laughs> about the way he does things. But as the movie goes on, he gets less violent towards the innocent. To the point he even helps Mothra. And he gives himself up to protect the planet. He's like, I gotta get Godzilla the hell out of here. And he dies because of it. That's true. This isn't really a Godzilla movie. He's barely in it. But when he is in this movie... He is unforgiving. He is a devil. He's... I do not care who you are or what you're doing. You are mine. <laughs> He's a beast in this movie, even though he's not really in it much. Next movie! I like this one. This is probably my second favorite Heisei movie. Godzilla vs. Becca Godzilla 2. I'm definitely going to rank this one higher. Why don't I rank it first and then talk about it? Because, holy smokes, this is a great one. And these are reasons that people can actually, like, agree with me on. Because this is just full-on bias. Like, oh, this is just how I felt. And, like, no one else sees it. 
a lot of these things I can, a lot of the things I can say about this movie are just, are a lot of things people agree with. It's just like, hell yeah, of course. This is handled great. Um, this one gets merits for just actually feeling like a movie. Which, unfortunately, Godzilla doesn't feel like most of the time. Yeah! Hold on. Where am I put? Does it go up here? <laughs> if it's up here. You know what? Yeah, fuck it. I'm putting it there. I think it's better than Biolanti in 54. Fight me. I'm not revering 54 as the number one golden thing that's like 10 miles above every other film in the franchise. I know what it is. I've already said this in the last stream. I know what this film is. I know that it's the foundation for the franchise. I know how deep its meanings are. I know how it applies them. I know what its influence was on the world. But... How often do you want to watch that movie? Like, <laughs> it's not. I don't know. <laughs> but this is a full ass movie where not a rare thing that this movie has that most other movies don't have. Is that most movies, you can gawk at the monster stuff and at best say that the humans are alright or passable. The people in this movie are amazing. They are actual characters that do shit and it's entertaining. They are great. I think my favorite protagonist in the entirety of the franchise is is the main character in this movie. The Pteranodon expert who built the Garuda. He's so fun. He's so entertaining and colorful. And then he likes the scientist who ends up raising baby Godzilla. And I saw someone else say something. What was it? Hold on, where did it go? Oh, there it goes. Yeah, this movie did so much for Godzilla's character development. It turned him from, he's this monster that we made. They made him a device that visualized the punishment of human action. This movie turned him into his own person. With his own motives. They made him a character in this movie. Which is great. Um... But the main character, the pilot, his Garuda basically going, yeah, we aren't using your Garuda anymore because we just made Mecha Godzilla. He's like a thousand times better. Now we don't need you anymore. Or, no, 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 no. They want the pilot of the Garuda. So we are going to train you. We're going to train the Garuda creator. We're going to train him to be a pilot for Mecha Godzilla. And he sucked. He just could not pilot Mega Guts. He did all the training and he just sucked at all of it. And then they moved him, that they demoted him. And he finds out about a giant pteranodon egg being found because these scientists on an exhibition, exhibition, I don't know why I said it like that, found an egg. And they found Rodan. And they're like, oh shit, is this another Rodan egg? And then they brought it back to their lab, and then it hatches, and they're like, what, it's a Godzilla? What the fuck? And that explains why Godzilla was there, to fight Rodan or whatever. But, they're like, oh, it's like a surrogate thing or whatever. Um, They find out Godzilla's heading in town, presumably because of Baby. Because Godzilla's been pursuing Baby the whole movie. And they dispatch Mecha Godzilla, and he's like the sickest fucking thing ever. Um, he loses though, unfortunately, because they didn't know Godzilla could reverse polarity, I guess. Um, 
Godzilla goes back to rampaging the city. He finds Baby. And he leaves. Why, why did he leave? I can't remember why he left. Because he wanted Baby and he found him. Anyways. Um, Rodan's B-plot was kind of interesting. Because then they find out there's that ancient song from the island or whatever. And it revives Rodan and he becomes Fire Rodan. Um, that was cool. The relationship between Rodan and Baby Godzilla is cool because they hatched from the same nest. So Rodan has a strong connection with Baby Godzilla too. So it's kind of like Rodan and Godzilla fighting each other to have Baby Godzilla. So that's a cool reason to have those two have conflict and fight each other. Which is awesome. Um, just what part of the movie do I talk about next? I talked about that. I talked about that. I talked about that. Fire Rodan showing up. No, 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 no. I'm going to go back to Mega Godzilla now. Mega Godzilla. Um... They realized that, like, okay, Mechagodzilla has a huge flaw. Godzilla just wiped his ass because we didn't know he could do that or whatever. After we tried to paralyze him. Um. <laughs> I would, too. I would be terrified if I woke up in the middle of the night with the credits of this movie. It's like that thing that Adult Swim did for a while. Where, like, at 5 in the morning, when they would switch back to kids shows... They play like that super haunting screen with the weird noises and like the giant eyeballs coming off the horizon. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> but um, Mecha Godzilla in this movie. Unfortunately, this franchise's community is very, this guy said this, therefore I think it too. We are very quick to take the opinions of certain people in the community and just go, oh, well, he said that. So that that's just the stated fact of this franchise. And the reason I mention this is Mechagodzilla in this film. Cinemassacre said in his review during the Godzilla-thon that, God, that he looked kind of dopey in this movie. Now everyone for the history of forever is going to think that exact same thing just because he said it. Like... What do you think about his design? Oh, I don't need an opinion on his design. He said this, so I can just say that too. <laughs> it's not just Cinemassacre. And that's not his fault either. He is very influential on the community, especially during the Dark Ages where nothing Godzilla was coming out. He was really good content for people. And it's not his fault again. Like, he didn't go, oh, I want people to take every word I say as the Bible. That's just how it happened. And it's not just him. Other content creators had this happen too. But I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But if you're one of the people that just thinks he looks dopey and ridiculous, I'm sorry, but you're missing out on one of the rawest Mecha Godzillas that's ever been created. He is so fucking awesome. He might. Kiryu's my favorite Mecha Godzilla for sure. But Super Mecha Godzilla is such a close second place that there are some days where I wake up and I think SMG is cooler. Like, there are, he's that close that some days I like him more, for sure. He's that sick. His arsenal, his design, his proportions, his aesthetic, like, every... I love him! He's so cool! But, anyways, his... His... What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. They were like, okay, we gotta... Fix Mecha Godzilla because he didn't work. What, what are we going to do? And Mr. Garuda guy sees an opportunity. He goes up to the head designer of Mecha Godzilla and he goes, Look, check this out. What if we took my Garuda that you guys don't want to use anymore for some reason? And what if we made and what if we made the Garuda attached to Mecha Godzilla for more mobility and more firepower? And they're like, What? Well, that sounds ridiculous. How would we do that? And he's like, oh, don't worry. It wouldn't be that hard. Just like a few modifications here and there. Very minor. He's like, you sure? Like, absolutely. This would definitely work. And it wouldn't even take that long. And they're like, hmm. 
know what? Fuck yeah. You're back on the team. We'll do it. He's like, fuck yes! Let's go! And he's back on G-Force. <laughs> and then they build Super Mecha Godzilla. Now I can get back to Fire Rodan, who finds baby Mecha who finds <laughs> who finds baby Godzilla, and he takes him. I think he just took him to Maguhari just because it was an open spot or whatever. But he was trying to get baby Godzilla back. And they dispatch Mecha they dispatch Mecha Godzilla to fight him. And Rodan gets his ass handed to him. Like he gets nuked. Um, and then Godzilla shows up because he wants baby. Both Rodan and Godzilla want baby. And Mecha Godzilla's getting in their way. Which is awesome. And they start to fight. Godzilla starts getting the upper hand again. Because for the most part, Mecha Godzilla is still the same. He, he's getting kind of wiped by Godzilla. Especially when he gets up close and melee with him. Then the Garuda shows up. Starts to fight Rodan. No, hold on. Mecha Godzilla and the Garuda show up to Makuhari to fight Rodan. Rodan gets kind of like tossed around by Mecha Godzilla, but then the Garuda shows up, and then Rodan just wipes the Garuda out of the sky. Then Mecha Godzilla just starts maiming Rodan. Then Godzilla shows up, then they all fight or whatever. Godzilla or Mecha Godzilla starts to lose, but then the Garuda becomes active again. And this is when the tables turn. This is when they combine. And the Garuda goes on his back. And Super Mecha Godzilla is activated. And it's the sickest thing ever. Because he almost never touches the floor after this. He just hovers the entire time. He turns around, looks at him. You're fucking mine. And he just starts blasting at Godzilla. And it's like, oh shit! <laughs> and he is ruthless. He doesn't give Godzilla a single second to breathe. He is just nonstop nuking him. And the fact that Godzilla's beams don't work on him is nuts. That's so unfair. <laughs> My, your beams won't work because I just absorb them. Okay, well then I'll just get up to you and punch you. You can't do that because I'm constantly flying and I can just fly away from you from a safe distance. It's like, okay, well what the fuck do I do? Nothing. You die. That's what you do. And Mega Godzilla just becomes such an overkill. Oh my god, it is. Yeah, the monster arts set of Fire Rodan and SMG, it's amazing. It's perfect. I mean, some people would beg to differ. They go, I want 900 more things in it. I'm I'm fine. I don't need a bunch of other things. <laughs> it came with what I needed it to come with. Except beams, but like, I got those. If you don't, you can DM me on Discord and I can probably find you places to get them. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll just wait for the higher. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. That Monster Arts is fucking perfect. Um, anyways. Mecha Godzilla starts wiping both of their asses. And Baby Godzilla actually calls out for Rodan, who's who basically just gave up. <laughs> Rodan gave up by this. He's just laying on the ground. He's like, okay, I'm just going to die. He hears Baby Godzilla call for help, though. And he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to die anyways. I'm tired of fighting Godzilla for custody. I'm going to help him out. And I don't know what he was going to do, but he was flying towards Godzilla. Then Mega Godzilla shot him. And Rodan immediately died. But he made sure to land on top of Godzilla. <laughs> that was so dumb. Guys, Monster Arts, give us more beams for Christ's sake. I want more beams with my Monster Arts. Okay, new release. Congratulations, guys. We gave you what you wanted. Here's a beam. What? Now you give us a beam? I hate you guys. Like, <laughs> Do you want the beam or not? <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk more about monster arts, but I got to finish these movies. I'm spending way too much time on these. Mecha Godzilla. 
Okay, anyways, then Rodan dies, but then he gives Godzilla his energy, and then he becomes Spiral, and then he just destroys Mecha Godzilla. And then... Godzilla takes Baby away into the ocean, and it's okay, whatever. <laughs> no, you're fine. I like talking about this stuff. It's just... We only have, like, 40 minutes left, and I still have... I still haven't even finished Heisei. God damn it. I guess I could just stay up later. I can finish the stream later if we have to. I'm finishing Final Wars by the end of the stream. For sure. I'm gonna finish Final Wars by the end. I, I'm saying it right now. Um. So yeah, that was the movie. And it was really good. The soundtrack is another reason why this is up here. It might be my favorite soundtrack in the entire franchise. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. And no, it's not just Mechagodzilla's theme. I know how hard it is and how much it smacks. His theme is amazing. It's not just that, though. I love literally the rest of the entire soundtrack. I'm not going to give it merits for one single track in the entire soundtrack and then just ignore the rest of it. The whole soundtrack is awesome. I love the motifs in this film. All the different motifs. There's Mechagodzilla's motif. There's the Garuda slash G-Force motif. Which plays all the time. Which I think is my favorite motif. Maybe in the whole franchise. It's so good. They play it when the army attacks Godzilla. They play it every time the Garuda is on screen, like in the hangar or whatever. They play that motif when they do the montage of the main character training to pilot Mecha Godzilla. I it's a when else do they do they play it when? No, they don't play it then. I was gonna say like when they merge to SM. No, they don't play it there. Um. I love the music in this movie. When Rodan's on the island, ooh, the all that crazy build up to then going into Rodan's main theme, ooh, it's spicy. <laughs> That's going up there, and I need to move on to the next movie because Jesus Christ, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's going right there. One of the coolest visual lineups for a movie ever with Godzilla and Mogira. Versus Space Godzilla. But wow is this movie not really that good. The monsters in the movie are awesome. Godzilla is so cool in this movie. Space Godzilla is so amazing. He, he's so iconic. He's Space Godzilla. He, oh my god. God, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> oh my god. Can I turn that down? Unless that was normal for you guys. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. Thank you to whoever just subscribed. Is it Dio's Hades? Or Dio Shades? <laughs> Or Delo Shades or Delos Hades. Anyways. <laughs> um Plot's alright. <laughs> this is the peak of Miki Seguza's character, which I don't know. Miki Seguza wasn't really that good, to be honest. She didn't really do much. 
Like, in the prior two movies that I just kind of went over, she does literally nothing. She just goes in cars and goes, mm, I sense stuff is happening. And it's like, okay, we can clearly see it. Thank you for telling us. Thank you for using your psychic powers, Miki. We couldn't have figured it out without you. Um. Her peak of the franchise is in this movie, and it's like, whatever. She goes, man, humanity stinks. Why don't you guys just understand Godzilla a bit better? And it's like, why? He's killing everyone. <laughs> Space Godzilla's dope. This movie is literally the story of Raditz in Dragon Ball Z. Evil space monster, evil space person comes to Earth. I'm actually related to you. <gasps> what? No way. Yes, I'm going to take your son and rule the world. <laughs> And then there's Mogira, who's literally Piccolo. And Godzilla has to be like, oh. It's like, I'm supposed to defeat you. I'm supposed to fight you. I was built to destroy you. But now we're going to have to team up to fight this evil guy that took your kid. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Mogira's dope. People think he's lame. I don't think so. He's awesome. The pilots for Mogira are also fun. Pilots tend to have really good characters in these movies for some reason. If you're a pilot, you're awesome. Jesus Christ, that tortilla was rough. <laughs> um, Almost every single B-plot in this movie was dumb as shit. Like, come on. Miki Saguza's I'm in love with Godzilla or whatever it was. The whole thing of, let's try to mind control him and influence him to leave or whatever. That, like, mind control thing they put in his head, that was dumb. The people that tried to kidnap Miki to use their powers, like, that was stupid. Who cares? Um, <laughs> Every single B-plot in this movie is ridiculous. It's, it's just a time waster. Spa the main thread is the only interesting part. There's a giant mutant Godzilla from space that was made from the DNA of Mothra having Godzilla shit on her or Biollante or whatever. Turning into space Godzilla. And he's coming to Earth to conquer. Like, that's dope. Um, But again, it's just not really handled that well. I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to move to destroy it now because I just got to get the Heisei era done with already. Godzilla vs. Destroya. The end of the Heisei era. The end of it all as it tried to be, as it thought it was going to be. They did... They tried to end this franchise off with this film. It's good. I'd even say it's great. Is it the best, though? Is it? I... I'm gonna be nice to Destroya. I'll give this movie respect. I will give this movie positivity. I am, however, not going to lie. <laughs> because I don't hate this movie. I wouldn't even say I dislike it. I wouldn't even say I'm neutral on this movie. I like this movie. I think it's good. Do I think it is the absolute ultimate pinnacle of the franchise? No. <laughs> Godzilla's dying. Junior's bigger. There is a new monster whose origin is directly tied to the original film. And it looks like the devil. Is it the devil? No. Not even close. But it looks like the devil. It's supposed to be symbolic. It is Godzilla's personal devil. It is his personal nightmare. I am aware 
that Burning Godzilla is super strong. I am aware that people think Destroya is super strong. I don't rate movies based on power levels. <laughs> or how... Or just exclusively the monster stuff. I'm seeing this as the movie. And I think that is... It's still a good movie. The pl No, let me keep it down here for a second. So the movie is... Godzilla's dying. He absorbed way too much radiation after his island exploded. Now he's going into nuclear meltdown. They're like, what do we do? What's going to happen? Well, he's going to keep getting hot. And he's going to blow up the planet. Or at least scorch the surface. He's going to scorch the surface of the planet and kill all life. Well, fuck, we can't have that happen. Yeah, so what do we do? Let's make another Super X with freeze technology. Let's try to suppress his heat. Either delay it or just suppress it. They make a new Super X with freeze weapons. And guess who pilots it? The Garuda pilot! Woo! That's sick. I like how this movie tied everything together. That, Space Godzilla did this too. Space Godzilla and Destroya are the culmination of the prior films concluding. Like Mogira is the representation of the mechs in its conclusion. Mecha King Ghidorah. Mecha King Ghidorah was destroyed and his remains were used to build Mecha Godzilla. When Mecha Godzilla was destroyed, he was refurbished into Mogira. Mogira has the story of Mecha Godzilla and Mecha King Ghidorah behind him. He is that part of the story. Baby Godzilla. That's Rodan's story. Rodan's whole kin kinship. Rodan's in there too. Rodan also lives on through Godzilla. Space Godzilla can be seen as the continuation of Biolanti concluding. I would say Mothra too, but Mothra's also literally in the movie, so I'd say that's Mothra's conclusion. And then Destroya concludes other things too. It concludes a lot of the people. Like, obviously Miki, of course. But like, the Garuda pilot? You'd think, like, after Mechagodzilla, he'd still do shit, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure the Mogira pilots were there too. The Mogira pilots... And the Garuda pilot piloted Super X-3. That's their conclusion. They're going to be piloting this machine. It's also the final Super X, which is also tying into Return of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Biolanti. There's a lot of things coming together and concluding in these movies. Um, Destroyer's designs are amazing. His origin works. His origin definitely works. Where people tried to remake Dr. Zerozawa's idea of like artificial oxygen manipulation or whatever. And they ended up creating these things. <laughs> and then they just start growing and culminating throughout the film and it's like destroy or whatever. Um, but the main characters are, like, whatever. The main nerdy kid who's, like, I know everything that's gonna happen. Like, okay, I don't care. The movie's supposed to be about Godzilla and Destroya. We don't care about everything else. Oh my god, I gotta think of more shit to say. But at the same time, I'm running out of time! What do I do? I need more monster, that's what I need. Ugh. Yeah, I was going to say, is he related? I think he is. I couldn't remember. I could have sworn he was related, but then I was like, oh, he went to that scene where he sees that lady. But I'm like, wait, was he related to her or did he just go and see her? But I'm pretty sure he was related. Yeah, he's related. So that ties him a bit more to the story. Like every other character is just like... 
kind of not really important. <laughs> it's a case of just we're just standing back and watching the monsters do their thing. And their thing is cool. Destroy is just wrecking shit and growing and acclimating. And then Junior... It's Junior, like, kind of trying to step into the shoes of his dad and going, I can be the king of the monsters, too. I, it's, I'm it's i big enough now. I can fight Kaiju. And he fights off Destroya. <laughs> then Destroya just goes, you know what? Fuck you. Um, He grows, like, twice the size. For those of you that don't know, Destroya's final form is only because he bit Junior. Destroya's final form, technically... Was that big crab form that Junior fought? That was that was just kind of it. It's like, okay, I am at my maximum size. Then he bites Junior and gets Godzilla genetics. And that's how he becomes like twice, even more than twice the size. And has that more bipedal body structure now. He's Godzilla-fied. And then he just kills everyone. The end. <laughs> he kills Junior. Godzilla on his deathbed. But at the same time at his peak power. Is fighting Destroya. Who's getting his ass wiped the whole film. <laughs> That's a thing I have with Destroya in this movie. I think the movie's fine and it's great. It's just the way the community perceives this movie. It's it's very inaccurate. Or destroy us in most people's eyes. He's like the ultimate big baddie. That's like the most powerful, strongest thing ever. Oh, he beat the shit out of burning gods. It's like, no, he didn't. Watch the movie. Destroya gets wiped the entire film. The most he does. Is throw Godzilla once. He throws Godzilla. Like he does like the tail choke. And like tosses him. He does that. He hits him with his beam a few times. For sure. But like that clearly didn't do anything to him. He said ow shit. And Godzilla just went okay I don't care. He cuts him with his horn. Which... Made a lot of blood splatter, I guess. That was it. It just made him bleed. They made it try to seem like he cut straight through Godzilla, but he didn't. His body would have, like, flopped if that were the case, the way he cut him. He was still fully intact. His skin was still there. There was just a ton of blood everywhere. So, like, he hit him. It kind of hurt. The theory of he did slice through him, but it immediately generated is a neat idea. But that's not what happened. And then every single time Godzilla even thinks of hurting Destroya. He's like screaming in agony. He gets his ass kicked. The whole movie. Okay, my turn. <laughs> Destroy his... Like, burning in hell. <laughs> There's never a, that didn't hurt, or I'm gonna make you suffer. The most he did to Godzilla was, ow, that hurt for a moment. And the only thing Godzilla does to destroy it is, this is so painful, I wish I were dead. And then he has the most unceremonious death ever. He tries to escape... I'm getting out of here. I'm this giant super hyper death monster being that everyone thinks is super crazy powerful. Guys, let's freeze his wings. And then they freeze his wings and he falls and hits the ground and he's dead. Like, people forget that part. That that's how he died. The army just shot his wings and then he fell and he died. He's not that impressive. He's impressive for sure. But, like, relative to the rest of the monsters in this franchise, he's not that outstanding. He's just another guy on the list of enemies. Godzilla's death is done perfectly. For sure. 
that was a perfect way to send him off. Um, the, I think that and as soon as Destroya dies, the rest of the movie's perfect. Like, they try to they try to freeze him as he's dying. It kind of works. He doesn't blow up the planet, but he makes Japan inhabitable. It's a bit more relaxing. He just slowly melts. His heart bursts. He lets out one last cry. And then he falls and he's gone. Everyone's like, well, there goes Godzilla. Then they realize all the radiation in the area just disappears. It's like, oh shit, what? And then the fog and then the silhouette of Junior being the, like, that's perfect. And it should have stayed that way. It just stayed that way. That should have just been the conclusion. Godzilla's junior silhouette showing up. Godzilla's will always be here. End. That's it. No more continuation. No more anything. That is the end. That is the perfect cliffhanger. I didn't need a continuation for Heisei. That is the perfect ending. I'm saying this because a lot of you guys know what the gemstone shorts are. <laughs> I love the gemstone shorts. I really do. They, I love the designs. I like their ideas. I like all that. But the one thing, they were so close to perfection for me. My problem is that they connected it to Heisei. It didn't need to do that. If you watch the Geigen short. I, okay, hold on. Let me rank this first before I have that little rant. Uh, it's great. It's not up here. It's it's at the top of this tier for sure. It's really, really good. But I would not put it up here. Uh, I'm putting it there. It's at the top of that these are great movies. Do I have that rant now? Or do I just gotta keep getting through this shit? Okay, I'm gonna summarize this movie short and sweet. So we can just get right to Millennium. One, two, three, four, just six movies. Six movies left after this one. So like I foreshadowed, I'm gonna critique this one in the same way that I had to critique this one. Is it a good Godzilla movie? No. I critique this one with that sense going, I may love this movie, but as a Godzilla film, is it that good? No. It's a primarily Mothra movie and Godzilla's in it. But when Godzilla is in it, he is Godzilla. He is terrifying. He does shit right. He goes nuts. You can love this movie. It can be great to you. It can be great to me even. I could say that this movie is amazing. But it's not a good Godzilla movie. I do not wish that this was a Godzilla movie. The primary argument I see for this movie is... Pretend it's not Godzilla. Just go in and say it's a different monster movie. Just watch this movie and pretend it's not Godzilla. If you just as his own monster, he's way cooler. I can agree with that. His design works as its own kaiju. It, it, it works as its own creature. As a monster design in general, it works. It's an interesting design. But it is called Godzilla. That is the truth. It is a Godzilla movie. So I'm going to treat it as one. And if I'm treating it as a Godzilla movie, which is what it is, so I'm treating it as the movie it is, it is really bad. This is not a Godzilla movie. If this creature had its own, if it just wasn't tied to Godzilla and it was just its own thing. Well, first of all, it wouldn't even be on this list. <laughs> but I'd probably have it higher. Not too high, though, because it, 
even aside from that's not Godzilla, it's still not a perfect movie. The the story is it's still pretty wonky. And meh. Um If he were to come back, I know people say this, like, I want him in the MonsterVerse or something, or I want him in this. But, like, maybe he doesn't have to be Godzilla. He can just be, like, a subspecies. But if you're going to bring him back, not only is that really weird, because that would be, like, if you brought Godzilla 2000 back in another movie. It's like, oh, there's more monsters in the MonsterVerse? And, like, oh, that's just straight up Godzilla 2000. What the hell is he doing here? That's kind of the same thing. It's just another Godzilla design in the movie. And it's like, well, what the hell? I want Zilla back. So... Technically, he is, because Monster vs. Godzilla. That's Godzilla, and this is Godzilla, so... I don't know. Anyways. Poopy movie. Godzilla 2000! Or the Millennium Era! And we only have... 10 minutes. <laughs> we're, we're gonna be here... For a bit. And I need to make sure I don't have anything in the mail. Because I'm pretty sure the post office closes at 9. Any mail? Any mail? Nope. Perfect. Okay. Which means I can stay here. Godzilla 2000. Mm, let me rank this one first because I kind of already know where it's going to go. Yeah, like there. This movie was made in response to this film. Because this film stunk. And they went, shit. We can't have people looking at Godzilla like that. We gotta fix it. Let's make a Godzilla that is the real Godzilla. It was a kind of rushed movie. It wasn't really fleshed out that well. But it was the dawn of the millennium era. One of the best designs of the franchise, for sure. Both Godzilla and his opponent. Orga's dope. But the plot's kind of slow. Interesting idea, though. Like, tornado chasers, but with Godzilla. I think that's cool. The dynamic that they have was interesting. It was a kind of meh film. Honestly, like, there's nothing crazy to take away from the movie. The new CG tactics stunk. <laughs> like, him underwater and him walking on the beach. Like, that's that was horrible. Um, his new theme is awesome. Ew, my monster's like warm now. I think it's just because I'm holding the can in my hand the whole time. Um, there's nothing crazy about this film to take home with you. Like, stuff happens, and then that's it. I don't really know how to word it. But hey, this was a very frantically made movie in response to this, and that's kind of how the rest of the Millennium Era would be. Just be frantic releases just to get a movie out and go like, oh, we gotta do this. So it started that for the Millennium Era. But they're like, okay, we need a movie every year. But how do we do that? I, I don't know. And then they just lost their minds and started making shit. Godzilla vs. Megagirus. Would I put it here? No. Because I don't dislike it. I think you're at the bottom. Godzilla vs. Megagirus. Brand new theme. Brand new soundtrack. Also awesome. I still think I like his theme in this film more, but this was going to be his consistent theme throughout the Millennium Era. And by that, I mean just the Kiryu Saga. But it worked. Megagirus' theme was also... The soundtrack in this movie is great. Megagirus... This is so weird. Godzilla vs. Megagirus is such a weird movie. In the sense that... Everything seems perfect... But it just isn't close to for some reason. Megagirus' origin and design and personality and everything is awesome. Megagirus is so cool. But at the same time, why don't I ever remember or care about Megagirus? 
It's so weird. Mega Gears is so cool, yet I never remember or recognize or care about them. And I'm pretty... <laughs> And there's so many scenes in this movie that are cool. Like the creation of Mega Gears or like the Mega Nulas. Like stalking the city and eating people. And then the city floods and they're all over the buildings. But I need to remember what the actual plot was. Like the characters. The main character was a lady who was in the army, right? Was she a part of the team that was working on the the black hole cannon? I can't remember. Anyways, the story wasn't that good in this movie. The fights were also very Showa-y too, <laughs> which was weird. And their modern CG could not keep up with that very well. I... Yeah, it's not the greatest movie, for sure. <laughs> but it's weird because I love Mega Gears. But at the same time, like, why don't I ever revere them as much as I think they're good? Um, GMK. GMK. G -l 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 -l. Funny story with this movie. I think it was last year. It was either last year or two years ago. I think it was... Fall of 2022. Uh, my uncle was in town. And he was like, hey. You are the crazy Godzilla guy. I kind of feel like I'm in the mood for watching a Godzilla movie. You can pick any Godzilla movie that you think would be good for me to watch. And my brother was there too. And it's like, yeah, let's watch a Godzilla movie. Um, It was a while since I actually sat down and watched a Godzilla movie. So I was like, oh, what movie do we watch? And in my head, I'm thinking, what are all the movies Godzilla fans always recommend to show new people? The 54 movie, Shin, GMK, and the Kiryu movies. And I went, oh yeah, that's right, the GMK movie. That one's awesome, right? And <laughs> I went, okay, let's watch GMK then. And I got GMK and we watched it. It, uh, <laughs> it's not as good as I remember it being. Because it, it, I remember watching it too and thinking that's the coolest shit ever. I know why everyone likes it. But then I watched it again with my uncle and my brother. And I was like, damn, this is not as good as I remember it being. And I could tell they didn't really love it too much either. Like, they thought some parts were pretty neat. But I'm like, why? This movie seems like it did everything right. It's such a cool idea, too. Takes that the franchise has never done. Like, Godzilla just being a straight-up... Demon. And Ghidorah being a good guy? Like, what? That's sick! And they all have, like, feudal Japan origin stories. The Guardian Monsters and shit. Like, that's so cool. It's made by the guy who made the Gamera movies. It's a very dark twist on Godzilla. His design is awesome. But I guess the... The, the blueprint of the main character seems great, too. She's the daughter of, like one of the main heads of the Japanese army and she's like a journalist it seems like they did everything right but I don't know it just wasn't as entertaining as I thought it was going to be don't get me wrong I'm still putting it high but if I didn't have that moment I would have put it up here somewhere but I went wow this is just not as good as I remember it being I think I liked it more than Destroya, though. Because, again, it still does everything right. What was it that I didn't like? 
because almost every moment with Godzilla on screen, he's portrayed exactly the way they want him to be portrayed. He is unforgiving. He is ruthless. He is terrifying. I think there were just parts of the human story that were kind of slow. And like, what are we doing here? Like, the build-up to all the monsters was awesome. Especially Mothra when she wakes up. That was amazing. But... If it was just the monster scenes I was talking about for this ranking, this would be one of the best, for sure. But the movie just has some slow issues with it, I guess. Oh my god, I'm running out of words to say. I've only got three movies left. Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Arguably one of the best human stories in the franchise. And Kiryu's dope. He's I am literally him. <laughs> well, technically I'm this one. But... A member of the anti-Godzilla force, or whatever they call it, Megala, whatever, the army that fights Godzilla. She was on a mission to try to defeat Godzilla, and she choked and ended up getting some of her comrades killed. And I guess she had survived. I think she was supposed to die in that situation, too. She has survivor's guilt, pretty much, and everyone hates her, I guess. But then she's asked to be a pilot for Kiryu. And everyone's like, what? No, she can't do that. She's going to get everyone killed. And they're like, shut your ass up. She's going to do it. And Kiryu is kind of cool. Because he was made from the bones of the original Godzilla. And all that. I think most of us kind of know this movie already. So I'm going to not waste too much time on it. But I'm still going to talk about it for sure. Kiryu is... Obviously a robot built by the army to defeat Mechagodzilla, but they needed to make him efficiently. Um, so they got pretty much the head scientists in absolutely everything that they needed him for. They got the head scientists to make the absolute zero cannon for him, which is a gun on his chest, which freezes anything it hits. Except Godzilla for some reason. Spoilers, I guess. To the point where every single atom in their body is brought to zero Kelvin. Absolute zero. And, like, they're just done. Um, they designed Kiryu to run on a battery power that could also be recharged wirelessly, I guess? They'd have, like, sonar disks on planes that can recharge Kiryu. Um, and the primary scientist slash engineer that worked on Kiryu was someone who essentially took fossils of animals and took the genetic code from their fossils to create artificial intelligence. Like the example they show you is that he took the fossil of a trilobite, took its genetic data, and pretty much made an animatronic out of the trilobite. And made it behave like a real trilobite based on that genetic data. That's what they did with Kiryu. They took the bones of the Godzilla that died in the 54 movie, put it in Kiryu, and used the genetic data from those bones to give Kiryu basic movement of a kaiju. So they don't have to engineer, okay, we gotta do all this coding and shit just to make them stand and to make them walk. You just do that genetic code thing and it does all that by default. Unfortunately, when he meets Godzilla for the first time, Godzilla, like, roars at him and that, like, awakens something in Kiryu. The, the moon rises and his shirt comes off and he turns into a werewolf. And he starts blowing up Tokyo because he thinks he's Godzilla again. And then they just watch him destroy Tokyo until his battery runs out. And then it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Um, the guy that makes the rope, that made the genetic data thing, he's another important character. 
he's probably the second most important character in the movie. Because while the pilot is the main character, he's like the second main character. He's the person that talks to her all the time. And he has a daughter who has a mom that died at birth. Died while giving birth to her. <laughs> and she has a whole thing with like grieving life too. And her and the pilot talk pretty often about how they grieve the lives of the people that they wish didn't die. It's kind of interesting. And then they look at Kiryu, who's technically Godzilla being revived. And that ties into the whole death thing too, and it works out pretty cool. The fights between Kiryu and Godzilla are cool. They're very anime-y. For some reason, Godzilla survives getting point-blank shot. I still never understand that. But this is one of the best movies for sure. I will put it there. I think just as a movie, it's better than Biolanti for sure. It's not as spectacular as Biolanti. It doesn't have the visual spectacle that Biolanti did. But the film's story and arc, along with just the monsters being cool as shit too, not as cool, but still being cool as shit. And it's the story's consistently good, as opposed to this one where the story's amazing. And then kind of just dies off for a bit and then has a few moments again where it's just amazing. This one is a consistently good story. Um, The next one. The one I like more but also is not as good. This is another case sort of like Battle for Earth where I'm like I love this one so much more. But I know it's not that good. <laughs> We're on the last two. I can do this. <sighs> Tokyo SOS. We added Mothra in the equation. And we rebuilt Kiryu because he lost his absolute zero cannon and his right arm. So we rebuilt his right arm to be a drill hand. And we don't have time to build another absolute zero cannon. So we'll just make his beam very stronger version of his mouth beam. <laughs> And Mothra's here, I guess. And for some reason, she's really mad that they're taking Godzilla's bones and pretty much reincarnating him. Which I can kind of understand. What I don't understand is that her motive is, if you don't fix it, I'm going to attack Japan and destroy it. It's like, um, okay. And essentially, it's just the same movie again. Kiryu fighting Godzilla and then Mothra's there too. The main characters are different, though. The main character this time is a mechanic that works on Kiryu. He just works on building Kiryu. And he's related to someone that was in the original 61 Mothra film, which is really cool. So he knows Mothra and all that. Anyways, Godzilla's back and they gotta do whatever. And then there's like the whole moral of Kiryu and like his morality of existing and using Godzilla's bones or whatever. It's alright. It's also the conclusion to Kiryu, like Kiryu's gone or whatever, he sacrifices himself because at the end of the movie, Godzilla repossesses Kiryu again, but he sacrifices himself to keep Godzilla trapped in the ocean and all that. Um, guys, don't worry, I'll finish this up. <laughs> There's just two more left and I'm going through one of those two. Um, for the most part, it's all right. There's two big issues I have with this movie that I think would have made it much nicer. First of all, the final fight in Tokyo, well, I guess the only fight, has a lot of cutaways. And they're like long cutaways too. I think we just needed to see those three monsters go at it. Because those scenes when they do fight are very well done. Um, I guess to have cutaways every night. You, you need to still have the people do stuff. But just don't make them that long. Like, good lord. Or at least just have, like, intermissions between the fights. Like, oh, these two monsters just made an explosion. Now they're both knocked out for a moment. And while we're waiting for them to get up, then stuff happens. Not in the middle of combat and then cut away. Um, the other thing I think they could have done more 
is with Mothra. They made that whole plot point of Mothra's distaste towards the revival of Godzilla and wanting him to be put to rest. Sort of giving her a malicious view towards Kiryu himself. And then they just completely forget about it. They go, you need to get rid of Kiryu or else we're going to get rid of him for you. And then Godzilla shows up and she fights Godzilla and then she immediately stops caring and goes, Kiryu, help me. And now it's just Kiryu and Mothra fighting Godzilla. When they set it up to be like it was going to be a free-for-all where everyone was going to fight everyone, where Mothra would fight Godzilla and Kiryu, where Kiryu would fight Godzilla and Mothra. Mothra should have had a bigger role in the movie, especially since they added her in. The main characters are mostly tied towards her. And, yeah, and she's, like, the new addition to the movie. They should have done more with her. And I, th I think if they fixed those two things, the movie would be significantly better. But this is one of my favorite films, for sure. It's my favorite Mechagodzilla design, period. Specifically 2003. There's a Monster Arts for Godzilla 2002, but I don't want it because I'm waiting for 2003. And I want a Monster Arts Mothra 2003. This is such a sexy roster. They all look so good. It's my favorite Millennium design for Godzilla. Like, this is one of my favorite designs for Mothra, period. And this is my favorite design for Mega Godzilla, period. Um, where would I put this? I think I put it above... Um... Yeah, I'm putting it above Tear of Mega Godzilla, but not above Son of Godzilla. Okay, we're here. We're at the last one. Oops. Godzilla Final Wars. This is a very controversial movie. In the sense that some people really fucking love it and others hate it. Just to let you know, I don't hate this movie. I like it. I really like it. Which is weird. Because with the standard I've been setting for all these movies, and that I'll be setting for the rest too, is I'm writing them based on the movie they are, and not just the monster shit or whatever. And you could look at this movie as, it's not really a movie. It's like an album. It's the, we love Godzilla for two hours. Not, look at this theatrical film. Just watch it. <laughs> it's like, it's what I said when I was talking about Mechagodzilla 2, where it's one of the few cases where it actually just feels like a movie, where it's not just you're going to the theater and buying a ticket to watch a wrestling match. Because that's what most movies are. The versus movies, the story's usually super plain and thin, and it's just there to get the monsters to fight. It's like WWE, where, like, the wrestlers have lore with each other and their own stories, but when they, like, interact with each other, it's just to get a reason for them to get in the ring and start fighting each other. The story isn't the main focus. The main focus is the fighting. The story is just there to get the fight to happen. And that's what most Godzilla movies are, too. It's a lot like wrestling in that sense. But... This is taking that idea and going with it. Like, not just kind of... Like, it's going with it it's godzilla fighting every single monster and they had the story of aliens are here to take over the world they've mind controlled everyone godzilla has to fight everyone the characters aren't good but they're fun they're colorful they're entertaining to see on screen they aren't just there to get the story going that's what they do but they make it work in a colorful way. They have snarky attitudes. They, they're very flamboyant. The designs go nuts in this movie. The choreography's crazy. They bring Zilla back just to say, fuck you. Like, come on. <laughs> Monster X is in this movie. Monster X is another top three monster for me. How many times have I said that? Have I said all three of my top three monsters? I know I said Biolanti was. Monster X is in there. Did I say Titanosaurus maybe last stream? 
I think it's Monster X, Titanosaurus, and Biolanti is my three favorite kaiju. And then, I don't know, Kiryu. <laughs> but anyways. This is a case where it's like, it's not the movie, it's the... Celebration of Godzilla for two hours. If I was rating this as the movie it is... I would probably put it right above Megagirus. But I'm putting it... Here. I think that's a good spot. For what I got out of the movie, that's where I'm putting it. That's what I got out of that film. That much high ranking. And with that, I have ranked all the movies that I planned on ranking this stream. We went 15 minutes over time, but thank goodness we got it. Half of you guys left. I, I think we peaked at like 12 or 13 viewers and we're at 6 right now. Which is still progress. I'll take that over most of my usual stream counts. Which is like, I don't know, 4 max. It's like the fact that I got 12 or 13 is pretty neat. I'll take it. I'd love more recommendations for things people would want to watch. Because if I'm just doing streams that, like, only two people are showing up to, I'm like, I just shouldn't keep doing those. Then. I should do something else. I want something people want to watch. So, just let me know that stuff, too. Because you guys clearly like when I do my tier lists. <laughs> and I kind of like them, too. I get to tell you guys my view and stances on this stuff. I, I get to let you guys see through my perspective of this franchise. As opposed to most other people so i think it's i think it's a cool way to like dive into my mind and show you guys how i think about these things so i'd totally be down to do more tier lists if that's what people want to watch but yeah this is what i have so far for the original toho films and you this is the entirety of the godzilla franchise before it went dark for 10 years <laughs> We finished this movie, now we're in my childhood, where nothing happened. All this shit just happened, and then nothing. And I had to grow up with that nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. With that, next week, we are going to conclude... Oh, shit, that's right! Hunger Games! Oh, you guys... I think it was like three years ago... Um, on, I would just stream on Discord, and I did Hunger Games. I did Hunger Games Simulator with just a bunch of random characters. If I do it again here, I'm not doing just Godzilla. That's boring. I don't want to be the exclusive Godzilla content creator. I want to show people that there's more to this world than just Godzilla. That you can love Godzilla, but also love other things too. As I, I say as I'm doing a Godzilla movie tier list. <laughs> the point is... Like I said, kind of with this tier list, I like getting to show people a bit of my mind. I like to show people my perspective on things. But I extend that even further. As I say, I don't want to just show people my perspective on Godzilla. I want to show people my perspective, period. I want to show people the other things I like, too. I want to show people the things I think of aside from Godzilla, too. And maybe show you why I like this thing as well. Or why I might like it too. Because Godzilla isn't the only thing in the world I like. Which seems crazy. But that's the truth. There are other things I like. Things that you can't even tie to Godzilla. Like I know most Godzilla fans are also Jurassic Park fans. Like that's an easy connection. Big reptile going rawr and breaking shit. I can see how that works. When you don't have Godzilla content you jump to Jurassic Park as a plan B. Um, lots of Godzilla fans are Gamera fans because it's another big kaiju. If I don't have Godzilla stuff, I can go to Gamera. There's things I can go to that just have nothing to do with Godzilla. And they're awesome. There's parts of my brain that aren't just Godzilla 24-7, which I like. I like being a diverse person with many different colors on my canvas is a way I guess you could put it. But anyways, yeah, 
I love how this started because someone recommended Hunger Games. <laughs> Anyways, if I did a Hunger Games simulator, which actually sounds really damn fun. Um, yeah, I wouldn't do just Godzilla. I'd add Godzilla characters for sure. There would definitely be Godzilla characters in it because I like Godzilla. But I would show you guys other shit too. I'd put other people in it like fucking Goku and Springtrap. <laughs> Oh my god. But yeah, you guys should have been there. Like, a few years ago, in the summer, just on Discord, I do streams of Hunger Games Simulator, and some people would just watch. Oh my god, that was the funniest shit ever. I, I need to do one of those streams soon, for sure. That shit was so funny. Expect that. Thank you for the recommendation. I completely forgot that I did those. <laughs> but anyways, next week, we will finish this tier list by doing the Reiwa era... And the MonsterVerse. Because I finished G I watched GXK. So I can actually do the whole thing now. But yeah, with that, I am going to go. I'm going to relax. I'm going to finish this poor carnita quesadilla that I probably have to reheat now. And yeah, I hope you guys take care. Man, my voice is tired. <laughs> I think I talked about Mechagodzilla for too long, but at the same time, I don't think I did. Because it's at the top. I need to convince you why it's so high. Oh, I talked about you forever, too. Anyways. Bye! <laughs>